Hello and welcome to our March 2022 episode of Talent Talks, a podcast and video series brought to you through the cooperation of the Talent City Centre Government, the City Centre New Arrivals Council and the City of Talent as part of the Talent City Centre for New Arrivals Project. I am Solis Rose Corte and I'm part of Talent's international community, happy to help you connect to your new city and feel more like a local. Now, on this episode of Talent Talks, we'll take a somewhat somber approach as we talk about the issues surrounding an event that not only devastated an entire country, but also shook the world to its core. Russia's military invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February led over 2.3 million people who once called Ukraine home to flee to neighboring countries. As at the time this report was filed, almost 15,000 of Ukrainian refugees had arrived on the shores of Estonia. Now, as Ukrainians who were already resident in Tallinn woke up to this terrible news, how did they feel? And how have the weeks that have followed Putin's invasion of their homeland impacted their lives, their perception of their future, and that of their nation. Our guests will share their stories with us. You don't want to miss it. Then, on a comparatively lighter note, the 14th of March is marked as Estonian Native Language Day. My co-host Chantelle and her guests will explore the various aspects of the Estonian language, from its social, cultural links and implications to its ties to the very identity of the Estonian people. And as experts, myself included, trying our best to integrate into Estonian society, we might just <laughs> learn a few tips and tricks on how to fully immerse ourselves in this unique language. Stay tuned for all these discussions right here on Talent Talks. But as usual, the local news. Let's start off the news with stories surrounding the Ukrainian crisis. The city of Tallinn has allocated 150,000 euros of its reserve funds to support partner cities Kiev and Odessa. This comes after an initial 25,000 euros was allocated to the Estonian Red Cross in providing humanitarian aid to the people of Eastern Ukraine. The city government has also donated two state-of-the-art ambulances towards this cause. Of the 150 thousand euros donated 100,000 of this will be apportioned to the talent strategic management office to cover the purchase of goods and transport costs of humanitarian aid to Kiev while the remaining 50,000 euros will be directed at supporting the people of Odessa through the Red Cross now talent mayor Mihail Kovat confirmed these details adding that proposals are being considered to increase the city's reserve fund in a supplementary budget to ensure that any future costs incurred, unforeseen or not, from both assisting the refugees and the running of the refugee centre will be catered for. On the 5th of March, a representative of the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, addressed the city of Tallinn, requesting for humanitarian assistance. By all indications, Tallinn has responded positively to this call. And speaking of positive responses, from March 10, 2022, the city of Tallinn is organizing a collection of everyday items in the district administrations. This call was necessitated by the fact that many people who fled Ukraine in the wake of Russia's military invasion had to do so with little to no personal belongings. Initially handled at the refugee centers, the deputy mayor of Tallinn, Bettina Beskina, has urged those who wish to donate to take their donations to the collection points at the district administration. Now, this will allow for proper transportation, sorting and distribution to those in need across Tallinn. Now, although grateful for all kinds of donations, the deputy mayor stressed the need for the items of focus to be clean and decent clothes and shoes. Now, unsurprisingly, the majority of refugees arriving in the city are women of various ages, as well as adolescents and children of both sexes. Now, donations will be accepted from Thursday, 
10th March or have been accepted since then in each district. So please bring them to the following addresses. You find addresses in Kesklin District Government. You find it in Mustamai District Government. Um, there's also the District Government Facebook page that you can visit to find more locations. Christine District Government, Pohia Talon Community Center, Lester May District Government. Um, and you'd also find the various days and times where these um, collection points are also active. So for further information, in case you want to find out more about what is needed at most in a particular moment, kindly contact the various district governments as well. So we're still on the subject of war, but a slightly different kind, because Talon has marked the anniversary of the 1944 March 9 bombing, as well as the Ukraine war victims. On this day 78 years ago, the Soviet Air Force bombed the city of Talon in two waves of air raids, leaving 554 Estonians dead destroying a total of 1,549 buildings and damaging 3,350 other ones. Now, this number accounted for about a third of the city's residential buildings at the time. Nearly 20,000 inhabitants lost their homes. Now, Estonia, the National Theatre, was among key buildings destroyed, whilst Old Town's Harju Street was badly damaged. Now, on the other hand, and in more recent history, on the 24th of February 2022, Russia launched a war against Ukraine, bombing residential buildings and civilian infrastructure, including hospitals in Ukrainian cities. Now, the number of civilians killed and wounded in the attacks is estimated by the United Nations to have exceeded 1,000 and still counting. Now, hundreds of thousands of people have fled the war in Ukraine, and many more have been displaced within the country. The day was marked by a memorial service held at the burial site of the victims of the March bombing in the Sislina Cemetery. A prayer service was led by the high priest of the Estonian Apostolic Orthodox Church. A memorial concert uh, in the Church of the Holy Spirit and a candle lighting on Hadron Street in honor of the victims also took place. Now, if you're out there and you wish to support the victims of the Ukrainian war, these refugees, please visit www.ukrainahex.aa. You can also donate to the Estonian Red Cross or become a volunteer. Simply visit www.redcross.aa for more information. Now, moving away from the sea of support flowing in from across the world for persons affected by the Ukrainian war to other victims of this conflict, the animals, yes, the animals. Now, thankfully, they have not been left out as Talon Zoo has joined other zoos worldwide to collect donations in support of the staff and animals. Now, although animals have had no part in this conflict, they have also been adversely affected with their lives and environment put in jeopardy. From the onset of the invasion, Feldman Eco Park in Kharkiv was hit, damaging exhibits and wounding and killing some animals. Areas around the polar bear and tiger enclosures at the Michaelif Zoo were also bombed. Some animals in Kiev Zoo have been relocated to shelters, while about 50 staff and their families have made a home in the zoo to care for these understandably frightened and stressed animals. Tate Mahan, director of the Talent Zoo, has echoed the organization's unflinching support for the endangered animals and their carers. All donations from Estonian residents will be handed over to the Ukrainian Aquaria and Zoos through the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria, ESA, Rescue Operation. Donations for Ukraine zoos can be made via Talent Zoo on the Talent City e-services page. You can also visit www.talentzoo.ee for more information. So away from all issues regarding the war, let's move on to some much lighter news. On the 6th of March, Tallinn launched its newest initiative with free admissions to city-owned museums. This will 
happen on the first Sunday of every month. The keen interest in free museum Sundays was reflected in the numbers recorded on the 6th of March compared to a regular Sunday. Now, a total of 4,806 people visited the branches of Talent City Museum. Of this number, 1,950 visited the Cake in the Creek Fortification Museum, 900 visited the City Life Museum, and 550 went to the Photography Museum. The Mia Miller Children's Museum hosted 450 visitors, with 380 people spending time exploring the Kalamaya Museum. The Talon Russian Museum and the Peter I House saw 320 and 256 visitors, respectively. There was a significant increase in visitors to the Literary Center Museums, too. Tamsara Museum saw 110 visitors. Vidya Museum saw 119 and 50 went to the UNT Museum. In all, the reception as well as feedback about the event has been positive, and Karel Oya, Deputy Mayor for Culture, says the initiative has opened the doors for people who would have otherwise never visited the museums. Director of the Talent City Museum, Heli Nurga, thanked the volunteers who helped make the event a success, adding that visitors' feedback will be taken into account and the lessons learned will be applied to ensure the success of subsequent events. Currently, only city-owned museums are involved in the Free Museum Sunday program, and Talon is hoping to extend an invitation to other museums across the city to join the program. Now, the next Talon Museum Sunday will be on the 3rd of April, 2022. For more information, visit www.talon.ee forward slash museum Sunday. And in other news, the Estonian National Adaptation Programme, Settle in Estonia, seems to have gained more popularity as the number of participants rose by 16% compared to the previous year, with Estonian language training being the most popular subject. Work, entrepreneurship and family training modules were also popular. Last year, 1,950 participants took part in the training courses. This year, the number rose to 2,262. Participants were made up of various nationalities, primarily from Russia, Ukraine, Nigeria and India. Most of these participants came to Estonia to work, study or live with a family member. According to Maria Asma, head of the Department of Cultural Diversity at the Ministry of Culture. The keen interest in the integration program is a positive one since many more people are moving to Estonia to live and to work. She reiterated the goal of the department to ensure that people who have chosen Estonia as their home will feel comfortable and be provided with the necessary resources to help them adapt well to the Estonian way of life and settle in faster. The importance of understanding the social, cultural, financial and legal landscape in Estonia cannot be downplayed and the director called on employers to encourage their non-Estonian employees to participate in the integration programs. Now the numbers. In 2021, Estonian language courses topped the list with 905 participants. The module outlining the values and the principle of Estonian state was attended almost 400 times and training on work and entrepreneurship more than 60 times. One day thematic training sessions on the adaptation program are held in English and Russian. Language courses A1 and A2 take between three and five months to complete. The Settle in Estonia program is a program designed to provide an overview of the Estonian state and society, as well as daily life in Estonia. The program provides newcomers with answers to important questions, from their rights and obligations in Estonia to how to open open a bank account, for instance, find a family doctor, or how to find and enroll their children in educational institutions. Now, a better knowledge of the local way of life in Estonia will help foreigners to settle in better and to contribute to the development of the Estonian economy and the society. The program is open to all foreigners.
that's including you, with residence permits and rights who have arrived in Estonia within the last five years. Last year, 4,014 EU citizens registered their residence in Estonia for the first time. In 2021, 6,087 third country nationals were granted a primary temporary residence permit compared to 4,710 in 2020. Now, temporary residence permits are issued in Estonia for work study, business, or for family migration. Since 2015, more than 10,600 individuals have participated in this program. And that's it for episode nine of Talent Talks. Now, if you want more local news content, then subscribe to the Talent in Brief English newsletter today. The newsletter, which comes out once a month, provides a great overview of what is happening in the capital. You can also find a subscription link to this podcast in the description below. Now, also, if you live in the city center or you're just interested in everyday updates from Keskelin, or maybe you have some questions or you wish to share your thoughts with the local authorities, then join the Tallinn City Center for Expats official Facebook community administered by the Tallinn City Center government. Don't forget to subscribe to the Talent Talks YouTube channel as well whilst you're at it. My name is Solis Rose Quarte. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you next month. Bye.